Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the CareerLink Manufacturing Month Virtual Job Fair. Today, we will be hearing from three employers hiring for various positions across the manufacturing industry. Each employer will speak for approximately 15 minutes to give you some information about their company and will highlight the job openings they currently have. If you have any questions at any time, please type them into the chat and we will address them during the Q&A session that will be taking place after all employers have presented. Today's session is being recorded and will be made available in the employer booth for you to refer to later. Now, I am pleased to introduce Norm with CareerLink. Norm? Uh, thanks, Daniel. Um, I'm excited to have uh, three great companies from Central Illinois uh, ready to present today. Um, we have um, Caterpillar, um, Mapleton Facility. Uh, Megan Lundin will be presenting uh, for them. Um, we're very excited uh, to have such a large employer uh, with numerous openings joining um, our event. Uh, we'll have Gene from Natural Fiber Welding uh, presenting on their behalf. Uh, they're a new uh, company that's got some exciting um, openings um, and involved in uh, aerospace um, plant uh, material fabrication. Uh, very, uh, very exciting, uh, very tech savvy company. Um, then we also are excited to have Pride staff with us. They do uh, some of the best staffing in Central Illinois for numerous companies. Um, we're glad to have Brooke and Sam Lewis join us for that. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Daniel. Thank you, Norm. Uh, we will go then directly into our first presenter, and that will be Kat Mapleton. Megan, are you available to present? Yes, I am. Thank you. Fantastic. You can begin whenever you're ready, Megan. Okay, we can go ahead and click forward to the to the first slide with some information on it. Um, first of all, hello, and um, thanks for joining us today. My name is Megan. I work at Caterpillar in Mapleton. Um, just here today to, to share some positions that we have open and also talk to you a little bit about um, our organization, what we do. Um, hopefully you, you're familiar with our company on some level, but I wanna share some specifics to Mapleton and some of the changes that we're making and are expecting to make. So I'll start at, the, at a high level here. Um, an overview of Caterpillar. We've been around since 1925. Um, so we've got a, a longstanding history, particularly in the central Illinois community, but, but really across the globe. Um, Caterpillar has 21 brands in more than 30 countries and um, we're able to leverage, leverage that footprint to do some really cool things. Um, we, it, we helped build the Panama Canal. We um, have constructed landmarks like the Hoover Dam, the Golden Gate Bridge, um, some really, really cool legacy pieces um, around the world. In 2019, our sales and revenue was about 54 billion. So I hope that speaks to the opportunity that exists at Caterpillar um, to move up, to move on, to learn new things, uh, because we've got a lot of roles. Um, even within our facility in Mapleton, there's quite a path, a career path for those who really want to go after it and grow and continue to learn new things. Uh, we have Caterpillar split up into three different segments. So we have construction industries, resource industries, and energy and transportation. Um, I'm here today representing a component of energy and transportation. So that's anything from solar power to uh, microgrid power solutions, generators. Um, that's what our segment is focused on. And in Mapleton, we, uh, we have a foundry. So you are likely aware of the Mapleton foundry. We pour um, blocks for the biggest engines in the world. They support our, um, our generator business and some of our solar business. Uh, so that's, that's what we're here to cover. And on the next slide, I can share a little bit more detail about Mapleton specifically. So um, we're located in Mapleton, Illinois. You might have assumed that. Um, we are a foundry. We've got, actually this number is a little bit higher. It's lower now. We've got about 900 employees there total. Um, some with precision seals, which supplies the military and supports our military contracts, and then the others on cast metal organizations. So the majority of our foundry and what I'm here representing today is the cast metal organization, the foundry component um, within Mapleton. And we, our customers, are other Caterpillar business units. So we serve electric power, oil and gas, and our marine business uh, within energy and transportation. So the 3,500, 3,600 blocks, C-175 engine blocks. Um, and we do all the heads, liners, seals, and any other iron components that would touch any of those, any of those products for Caterpillar. 
Um, we use modern electric melting. We have gray iron foundry. Um, we melt about 300 to 400 tons of iron a day. And we have our castings are anywhere from 15 pounds to 22,000 pound cylinder blocks. So uh, we are really proud of um, sort of representing an art that seems to be dying a little bit, unfortunately, across the globe. A lot of foundries uh, had to close after the last serious downturn. And so there's a lot of things we're making in Mapleton that no one else can make in the world, uh, which is kind of cool. We um, are one of the largest foundries in the US and we house the CAT micro foundry as well with 3D printing capability for some of our low volume parts. So we, uh, we are expanding, our, our business is looking solid at the moment. We've seen an uptick in demand. Uh, actually this whole year, we've kind of seen a slow and steady uptick, which was a bit unexpected given the global pandemic and some uncertainty in, in the economy, but we're, we're holding strong in Mapleton and doing pretty well. We can move to the next slide. Okay, so I do wanna talk about supplemental employees because the, um, the roles that we have available today, we're looking to hire five um, as soon as possible, will be supplemental at the beginning, but I'd like to, to share just very transparently why we're doing that and what our methodology is gonna be because this is different. I started in uh, Mapleton in May, May 1st actually, and um, after getting to know the organization a little bit from an HR standpoint, getting to know the people, getting to know the leaders, we decided that we wanna take a, a bit of a different approach to hiring some of our workforce and especially through the next year in the middle of this pandemic. And so we do, we are gonna hire first as supplemental employees. Um, they're contracted uh, employees. So they are Caterpillar employees, but they're contracted through an agency. Um, through a central labor agreement. So we are a union facility. You are likely aware that we have uh, UAW as our primary union for Caterpillar, but holds the majority of the employees, um, represents the majority of employees at Mapleton. And if we click forward, I'll share a little bit more about the specific roles. So I mentioned that we're, we're taking a bit of a different approach. And um, I'm not gonna read you, you know, the job description. I want you to take a good look at that. It's posted online. I'm gonna leave it up for a while. But we're looking for five positions and you can see that it's uh, the title is a foundry specialist. Uh, there's a link within our booth through Illinois WorkNet that will take you directly to this role. But if you ever went to caterpillar.com slash careers and just typed in foundry specialist, it would pop up too. Um, I do encourage you to use the WorkNet link just so we can, we know um, where our traffic's coming from, but ultimately um, foundry specialist sounds really general and you might be wondering what that means. Um, there's a general job duty list here and responsibilities that say are not limited to, but you'll notice that I put um, some, some really focused on uh, cleaning up top and there's a reason for that. This is sort of an entry level role. And while there are roles within our factory and on the shop floor that are the same level pay wise and, and grade labor grade wise, um, this role, this is work that we specifically brought in house that we used to source. And we, we had another company perform this work and we brought it in house very intentionally because we would like to get people in that may have may have a lot of work experience but are looking for an opportunity to come to CAT or maybe they have no work experience and they're looking to prove themselves. We wanna bring people in and make sure that they like working at Mapleton, they like the culture, they like the culture, see value and what they can contribute to our foundry and really want one of those production shop floor roles. Um, we're looking to use this as a bit of a let you test us out, you know, let, make sure that this works for you and you're gonna be happy here. Um, and, and likewise, that we find you to be dependable and accountable and be working, you're working with values and we want you to keep coming back. Um, so that's why we're looking to sort of grow our pipeline. These roles are designed to bring in, make sure things are working out on both ends and hopefully get you to one of our other positions on the shop floor. So that's why this is a little bit more of a generalist role. It includes a lot of the things that are traditional with the foundry specialist, 
such as you know bolt threading and molding functions from pouring basins, um, the finishing functions on the risers, the hand chipping, spinning, wire pulling. A lot of those things, you know, are are roles that are typical of our production floor. But this particular team, this department, um, also does some um, facility cleaning. So you'll talk about our molding floor since we are a foundry. We got a lot of sand. We have a lot of uh, different floors and basement levels um, because of the work that we do. So when I say cleaning, it doesn't mean just like sweeping the hallway or something like that. Um, it, it's really specific to our foundry. Now there are some roles janitorial in nature that are included in this department. And um, again, it's all one team sort of covers all of the bullets that you see here on the job description. And we are looking to build, bring those folks in uh, make sure they're a good fit mutually and, and move them on to something else. Um, the qualifications, we look for two years of prior work experience. We're flexible on that. Um, what we're really, we want to make sure that you um, are able to frequently lift and carry boxes up to 35 pounds, able to stand uh, for your entire shift. And with breaks, of course, um, ability to operate heavy machinery and manufacturing equipment is a um, is a is a plus and these can be with or without reasonable accommodations so most of these we have been able to accommodate for any anyone who um, may have some restrictions as far as that goes and on the next slide I'm going to expand a little bit more about these roles we are specifically looking for um, second and third shift as you can see on the bottom of the slide um, top candidates would have previous machine shop experience, manufacturing experience, um, but again, not required. Uh, computer skills preferred, verbal and written communication skills um, should be strong. Problem solving and decision making is preferred and uh, math skills. So those are for top candidates preferences and additional information, you can see the wage range. So our starting range for this particular role is 1626. Um, the the range is between 17, it goes up to 1751 and we evaluate raises every 26 weeks. Um, positions are supplemental. So I mentioned that before, that means 40 or more hours per week, but with no vacation or holiday pay. We do have some health benefits that I'll tell you about in just a minute here. And it would be second or third shift. They are in Mapleton and there's no relocation offered at these time for these roles. The second and third shift, um, we are staggering shifts a little bit due to COVID right now, just to make sure there's no like mass entry or exit of, uh, of employees at the same time. But generally speaking, second shift is three to 11 and third shift is 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. And then we'll click forward. Okay, so just a little bit more about um, our shift and to build on top of the wage conversation. We do have a 30 cents per hour night shift premium that these rules would be eligible for. Um, the overtime premium rate is time and a half. So pretty standard to what you're used to seeing. Uh, overtime is asked on a rotating basis and the company can determine overtime opportunities. So it can be offered as voluntary and, and sometimes if we get a huge uptick in demand, it can be mandatory. Um, operations will, we, it's never our goal to, to do mandatory overtime. Um, it's always our goal to provide advance notice, to have conversations and dialogue with employees for it to be a win-win for us and for you. Um, that's so very few times do we have to do mandatory, but it does happen. Overtime may be required up to 10 hours per day or two out of every three Saturdays within our, our rights. Again, that doesn't happen very often. Um, we do everything we can to avoid that because uh, we want you to be happy and stick around. Um, if you can click ahead to the next slide. So I wanna spend a little bit of time here um, with what we're looking for. I mentioned the work history, but our leadership team recently did a sort of a, a powwow on, hey, if you could write me a profile of the candidates you're looking for, um, people that you wanna bring in and you wanna grow, you know, that you want to really expand their opportunities and find a career path here not just a, a job they, where they come in and do the same thing every day and then go home. And um, these are the things they said. So I wanted you to have a chance to take a look at this and 
maybe it would give you a bit of a feel for our culture and what our leaders are looking for, but positive attendance, certainly, you know, and dependability, um, that just doesn't mean showing up. It means that your team feels like they can depend on you too. Your coworkers feel like you're pulling your weight. Um, demonstrating a strong work ethic. We expect honesty and hard, hardworking individuals. Um, we have a lot of people at Mapleton that really love Mapleton, that have been there for a long time. They're dedicated to the product. They're, they're proud of the product we produce. They see what it's doing for the world and they feel like they're part of something. So we're looking for, for people who kind of have that work ethic. Can follow instructions and read standard work. Um, you can imagine in a foundry, there's, there's a lot to pay attention to from a safety perspective. And so we really want um, people that will follow standard work and will do exactly as it's supposed to be done. Um, that leads to the next point, which is dedicated to safety. And I, I think that goes without saying for any manufacturing or factory kind of setting um, that we have to get everybody home safe every day. And that has to be number one priority for any, any candidates that we would consider. We also hope that we can find people who exercise good judgment and um, a good example of this is, you know, because it sounds so generic, is we want people to understand that we're running a business um, and we have customers and delivery orders and they're, we want them to be on time and we want our customers to feel like we're working on their behalf. We want to solve problems as a team. You know, exercising good judgment is really demonstrating that you want to be a part of that and part of the solution, not like, oh, well, that's not my problem. Um, you know, walking, walking past something that should be fixed or should be picked up and letting it go. Um, we want people that are, are going to exercise good judgment in those situations. Positive attitude and accountable. I think I've covered some of that in the other talking points. And, and someone that looks for solutions, takes initiative. Um, and really, I, I mentioned this with our new philosophy for hiring, but we want somebody who doesn't just want this job. You know, we want somebody who comes in and wants more than this job and is willing to do this job for a little while to, to prove themselves and to make sure that they're gonna be a good fit for our organization. Um, pre preferably, we're interested in candidates that ha have done physical work before. We don't want to catch anybody off guard. Um, and certainly in the summers, you know, it can be hot. We wanna be honest and forthcoming about that. And if you've had any other manufacturing jobs, agriculture, mechanics, construction, landscaping, all of those things, certainly are um, preferred, but not required. And just a quick look here. Um, I think we've got just a couple slides left. We do have a healthcare benefit plan full for supplemental employees. Full disclosure, um, this is, this could tweak slightly um, beginning in November, but the data I have today is this, and I don't expect it to change drastically enough to change your mind one way or the other. So I thought I'd just be transparent and share it with you. If we click ahead, you'll see some of the details of the healthcare plan. Um, just to give you an idea, um, we do have a plan for supplementals, which is nice. And typically um, this is this is pretty a pretty standard plan. It's called the works for me plan. Um, and we've got a deductible for individual and family. And then, you know, in network is 80-20 coverage. So um, not too bad. And then maximum out-of-pocket for the out-of-pocket amount would be 6000 for an individual and twelve for a family. And I think those are the last of my slides. And I think I covered everything. And I think questions are at the end, correct? So I will, I'll pause there. And um, thanks again for listening. And if you have any questions for me, I'll stick around till the end. Thank you so much for that presentation, Megan. And uh, Megan is correct. If you have any questions for her or any of these subsequent presenters that we will have here today, please feel free to enter those questions into the chat section and we will get those answered for you at the end of each present, or at the end of all presentations, excuse me. Next up, we have Jean with Natural Fiber Welding. Jean, are you available to present? I am, I'm ready. Can begin whenever you'd like. All right, so I'm Jean. I am from Natural Fiber Welding. We are a newer company. Uh, we started in 2015, so we are um, a baby in, in comparison to um, 
some of our other um, companies in the area. Um, but we're a new and exciting company. So um, let's see, we can go on. Can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So our company's um, goal, or the whole reason I guess we're in business is we're our founder, who is uh, Dr. Lou Caverhals, um, saw plastic, and plastic is a global pop problem, um, not just because of where it comes from, but because of where it goes. Um, plastic, the world is in love with it. So can you go to the next slide? Um, petroleum and the products of petroleum, like plastics, um, have inbound problems, meaning um, when you are pulling the crude out of the ground, it can cause problems. Everybody's aware of um, the New Horizons disaster that happened down in the Gulf of New Mexico um, and, and the disaster that that caused. Can you go to the next slide? Um, so it also has outbound problems, meaning once we create the plastic, what happens to it, where does it go? Um, there is a lot of plastic in the oceans and the planets. And the thing is it never, never really goes away. And once it's in our water system, like it never really, it, it never actually goes away. Um, so you can go to the next slide. And so, um, I don't have that slide. Um, okay. So plastics um, include polyester fibers. So a lot of your high performance um, clothing contains um, polyester, which is uh, another fancy term for plastic. And when you wash your clothes, they don't, um, little tiny pieces of plastic come off of your, your clothes and end up in the water system and, and the fish eat the plastic and so on and so on. Um, so can you go to the next slide, please? Actually, okay, and then one more. I'm out of order here. There you go. Um, so our our founder, Dr. Luke Haverhalls, um, looked at this problem and said, okay, well, what, what is a solution? And he felt that plant matter is the only real material that we can um, scale up to meet and replace the petroleum-based plastics in the in the world. That it's the only renewable true renewable um, matter in the world that, um, that gives us the material and the capability to replace the plastics problem. If you go to the next slide. So one of our products is called Miram, and this is the Miram cycle. Um, one of our employees actually developed Miram and is a completely closed circular um, and sustainable um, material, meaning it comes completely from plastics, is completely biodegradable. And so there's nothing in it that is bad for the environment and it's, it's all good. So we, we take the plant material, we make Miram, which is a leather-like material. And then um, we use that for um, shoes, it can go in cars, it can go in air, um, go in women's handbags, for example. And if, if you had Miram in a shoe and you just tossed the shoe out the window one day and left it by the side of the road, um, it would eventually, uh, it would decompose and it would become um, food for the plants that are there growing. And it's just a completely circular um, and sustainable cycle. Can you go to the next slide, please? So our whole goal is to leverage the diversity of plants to help sustain the world. Our other um, line, our other product is called Claris. And that in that we take um, cotton and we molecularly change cotton and other um, renewable or organic uh, materials so that they become, um, so that they're, more diverse and so that we can use them for more and they become um, just then we can use them for more applications. Um, so here's some of the stuff that we, we can have our, that some of our materials go into. 
Um, so not many people know this, but if you buy something that says that it's a vegan leather, um, it's not actually, it's plastic. It, it's not, um, almost all the time it's, pla it's plastic. It's not, real leather is um, animal material, um, but vegan leather is almost always plastic. So um, Miram, our product is designed to um, be a more sustainable alternative to vegan leather. Um, so if you can go to the next slide. And this, this slide again, just talks a little bit more about the two products, Claris and Miram. Um, you can see Claris there, there's in the blue box, the, um, the top line there is actually what cotton looks like um, naturally. So it's only each cotton fiber is only about an inch long and it looks like um, it looks like that and it's really only held together with um, with friction. And so um, the bottom line there is um, the cotton after we it goes through our process and we are molecularly tricking the cotton so that it bonds bonds on a molecular level and that becomes it becomes stronger and heat more versatile. And then um, Miram products, there's some there, um, especially from the fashion industry. Um, so the next slide is actually, um, some people may have seen the press releases. So the two shirts on the left are from Ralph Lauren, who is now um, one of our um, stakeholders. And then the shoes on the right is um, Allbirds shoes. Um, if you haven't heard of Allbirds shoes, they're really big on the West Coast. Um, so those are two of our um, more familiar customers. If you go to the next slide, um, we're also starting to work with Porsche and um, the inside the door there of that Porsche is uh, Miram Leather. Um, so they, they've they been pretty impressed with, um, with everything we've shown them. Uh, so if you can go to the next slide. Um, so this is a, another um, part of uh, Miram. There's um, no plastic, there's no acrylic coating, there's no binding. Um, it delivers um, durability, strength, and um, eye-catching aesthetics because we can um, make it different colors and different variations. Um, it is vegan certified. Um, so that's kind of more about our products. So then the next slide, goes into more of our key values and, um, and underlining our, our culture. Um, so we put people first. We want, we're, we want to take care of the people that are not just our employees, but our goal is to take care of everyone. Um, that means our employees, our families, our neighbors, the community, um, and everybody. Uh, we have strength and diversity. We know that, that. And so our goal is to be as diverse as possible. Uh, we want to always pursue the truth. Um, and, and with that, we want to, um, our employees to be honest and trustworthy. It's, it's not optional. We want to be grateful for what we have and what the world has given us and um, give back. We want to be curious um, and always look to improve. We want to be intentional about our actions and then um, solve problems collaboratively. So we want to always work with um, our coworkers and others. Um, we want to always give others the benefit of the doubt and respect our shared community. So those are our key values. Um, next slide, please. Um, so consumers um, in, in more recently, in the last several years or so, um, have been seeking a more clean um, lifestyle and this is seen definitely in the food industry and the fashion industry is now coming up with that, not coming up with it, but um, that, that perspective from the customer is now focusing on fashion. Um, so that's where we're, we're headed. If you go to the next slide. So consist, ugh, sorry, customers are seeking environmental sustainability again. Um, the fashion industry is, is catching up to um, to the food industry because of, um, there has been a trend from consumers to um, have a clean have to consume cleaner foods, 
and be more conscious of what is in their foods and then also now uh, what are in their clothing. And that's really gonna drive um, brand, um, brand support and um, brand loyalty. Do we have the next slide? Um, we need innovation to help suit, um, solve these problems. The soft food, goods, and materials um, that are propel propelled the, no, that have propelled the textile industry um, are almost exclusively synthetic plastics, um, and we are, are really seeking to replace those with uh, more sustainable um, materials, plant materials. And then the next slide. And then, um, so our, our whole philosophy is plants, not plastic. Um, recycling plastic is not just enough that we really truly, truly need to go into a um, circular system. Um, so that is kind of the overview of our company. Um, what I did not give in the slides is um, more of the actual jobs that we're looking for. Um, so right now we have a first shift and a third shift um, production that is um, already in progress. And probably closer to the end of the year, we are going to be looking for to add in second shift. Um, we are partnering with um, a local staffing agency for most of those, um, mostly because it's um, difficult to suddenly um, just hire 30 people all at once, um, especially when we're a smaller company starting out. Um, our, the position that we are focusing on the most right now um, from NFW is the um, industrial maintenance position. So we are looking for um, maintenance technicians. Um, they'll help maintain our equipment and they will be um, so on shift. We have first, second, and third shift. And um, their, their starting pay is $16.50 an hour. The, uh, I believe on the, um, our career link um, job board, we have the link to that particular job and it has that description in there. Um, if you're interested, please um, go onto our website and apply and then we'd be happy to take a look at your resume. And um, we do also offer benefits. We have the medical, dental, life insurance, long-term short-term disability, um, kind of all those um, standard benefits. Um, I did not put them in there because we are in the process of updating them um, and, and getting a, a new and better plan, which should be um, rolling out January 1st. Um, so those, that's exciting. That um, we're, we're an exciting, growing little company. That is all I have. Thank you so much for your presentation, Jean. If anyone has any questions for either Megan or Jean, you can enter those into the chat section and we will get those answered for you at the end of all of the employer presentations. Next up, we have Sam and Brooke from Pride Staff. Uh, Sam and Brooke, are you all available to present? We're ready. All right, give me one moment and I will put your employer booth up on the screen and we can begin. <clears throat> Are you able to see that, Sam and Brooke? Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah. Can everybody see us okay? Yes. All right. Uh, I'm Sam Lewis. I'm Brooke Fenske. Uh, oh, by the way, Brooke, I heard that the new Lego factory just started up and they're hiring employees. Oh, really? Please. Did a lot of people apply? Yeah, they say the line is blocks long. Silence, cricket. Uh, we, I am the owner of Pride Staff, and we are a staffing company. We're not a temp agency. Uh, we have um, been in business for 10 years now. Uh, when I say we're a staffing company and not a temp company, we do a few temps, but very rarely. Most of our jobs that Brooke's going to talk about today are long-term permanent jobs with benefits, PTO, uh, 
and just like any job, some of them are, as Megan had talked about with CAF earlier, we do some contract labor with some of our uh, employers, so they're always going to be on our payroll. But again, we have PTO and benefits that go along with that job. Uh, many of our jobs are what we call uh, uh, temp to hire. I, I hate using that word temp because it's only temp on our part, but they go to the our customer after a certain period of time and become a permanent employee with our customer. So it's a great way to get to know uh, your potential employer or future employer that way. So I, I just want to stress that uh, going forward. I am the owner of this agency here and basically we fill jobs from Peoria all the way over to, um, I would say to the, uh, uh, not quite to the Champaign area, uh, from Pontiac North to Clinton to the South. Mm -hmm. So any manufacturers, we work with a lot of manufacturers in that, in that area. Why I think we've niched ourselves in manufacturing, I think probably it has to do with my long background in manufacturing. I spent all my entire career until I owned this staffing agency in manufacturing. I started as an hourly worker on the shop floor, worked my way up, became an HR manager, a plant manager, a VP of engineering, believe it or not. So any job or position you can think of just about in a manufacturing environment, um, I've hired for sometime in my almost 40 years of being in factories and working in manufacturing. Um, We supply a variety of manufacturers. Uh, some of our operations that we uh, uh, staff are very clean, very pristine, state-of-the-art, um, high-tech operations, as you're going to tell by some of the jobs that Brooke's going to talk about. Some of them are more of the, the typical uh, heavy manufacturing. In fact, uh, some of our customers are actually suppliers to Caterpillar. So, uh, when Megan was talking about some of their jobs and some of the uh, challenges that they have, we some, see some of the same things with our suppliers. Um, so uh, that's a little bit about how we do business and what niche we're in. Uh, about us directly and our office staff, uh, we have um, uh, been noted for and recognized as one of the top uh, rated staffing agencies in the area. And there's a couple ways we know that. One is uh, through a thing called a net promoter score, which we ask all of our uh, employees who've been through here and all of our customers to rate us every quarter. And uh, for the last five years, we've rated uh, in the top uh, net promoter score for both staffing, employees, and customers. Uh, and that score also tells us where we fit in nationwide in customer or employee and customer uh, uh, ratings. And so if you look at our score, we're right up there with Neiman Marcus and Southwest Airlines and some of the people you, when you think of customer service and satisfaction, that's who you think of. Well, we're right there with them with our uh, net promoter scores. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn over to Brooke and Brooke's kind of just going to go over some of our jobs and how you can apply here and a little bit maybe about touch on our website with that, Brooke. Yes. It's all yours. Guys, thanks for joining us today. I'm Brooke Fenske. I am one of the recruiters here at Pride Staff. So there's a good chance that if you call into our office, I am usually the first one to answer the phone. So um, you will probably talk to me. I am here today to talk about a few, this is not all of the jobs that we have open by any means, but these are a few of the hot jobs. So these are the ones that our clients are looking to fill a SAP. So I'm gonna go through and talk about them. Um, I do see on our screen though, that they've, they've pulled up our website, which is fantastic. You can always go to our website at any time. Sam, if you wanna hold this up as well. We're, we're doing the Bob Dylan thing, if you remember <laughs> that old video. This is after he went electric too, by the way. Yeah, you can go to pridestaff.com backslash Bloomington. That, you're gonna see our lovely faces on our website. Um, there's a purple button on there that says view jobs. You just click that. It's gonna bring up a listing of all of our open positions. The qualifications, the rates of pay, the shifts that we have available. If you see anything that you are interested in applying for, just click apply now. It's a short form that comes over to our office and it gets you started in our system. Of course, you can always call us as well um, at the office, 309-661-1906. You can always text us as well. That is a little bit different phone number, but if you're more comfortable with texting, 
feel free to do so. We will definitely answer. So let's get into the hot jobs that we have available. And again, all of these are going to be listed on our website, but I just want to talk about a few today. Sam is going to be my assistant and hold this up. So the first one, CNC machine operators. Um, very hard to find a skilled CNC machine operator. So if you are experienced in that field, um, we have a client here in Bloomington who actually, as Sam had talked about, makes parts for CAT. They're always looking for experienced CNC machine operators. Um, and I have, a, I have a range on there of what they're willing to pay, 15 to $25 an hour. That's not indicative though. It doesn't necessarily stop at the $25 an hour. Um, they're very flexible to pay upon a skill set and experience level. The great thing about this company is that if you are not an experienced CNC machine operator, but maybe you have an aptitude for mathematics, maybe you have an aptitude for machining and you've always wanted to get into that field, they will actually do paid training for those candidates that pass a skills assessment and that they feel have the aptitude to go on and become CNC machine operators. They are always, they are actually going to be starting their next round of classes very shortly, um, I think mid November ish. So if you are interested, give us a call. We would love to talk to you and get you started in their CNC machine operator class. Like I said, it is paid training. The classes are full time for about three, three and a half weeks. Once you graduate, you put your put onto a machine. It does come with a pay increase as well, which is awesome. But that gets you started in a career. So again, it's not just a short term job. This is a career that's going to take you for years and years. And CNC machine operators are always in demand. So that's a good one. Always in demand. Okay, this is another hot job. We um, actually have four spots available on this particular shift. So we work with a company in normal Illinois that does seasonal forklift operator positions. But when I say seasonal, it's about five to six months that you're going to be working. It is a fast paced environment. So if you feel very comfortable operating a sit down forklift and you feel comfortable in a fast paced environment, and maybe you like having something seasonal. We have some guys that come back every year and work that uh, because they do. They have another job that they do in the summertime and then they come back in the fall. This job gears up typically in October. It goes with the harvest. Um, and then it usually is wrapping up in April to May. So it is a long seasonal position. This year they're doing their shifts a little bit differently um, just to maintain social distancing with everything that's going on. So the hot shift right now, we need four people. It is Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays from 4.45 a.m. till 5.15 p.m. Um, it is a longer day. It's 36 hours, but as long as you show up and you work those 36 hours, you're going to get paid for 40 hours, which is awesome. So you're going to get four hours of basically paid free time there. This is also great for people that want to get in and still have their weekend available. You're getting off at 5.15 on Saturday, so you're still going to have your Saturday night, and then you're off for the next four days. Think about the fact, too, if you don't want to have to pay a full week for child care, you're really only having to pay for two, maybe three days. Um, so, so that's a great thing for people that are looking for something that they can go in, work, have off the rest of the week, um, and they are hiring ASAP. This is a case of another employer that, of course, they would love people that are experienced sit-down forklift operators, but if you have the aptitude and the skill set, they are also willing to train. So give us a call or find this position on our website and apply today because they're looking for people right now. Okay, the next job we have available is with a, a uh, actually, I don't know, I would call it um, an auto body company. They actually weld on aluminum um, semis. And we have worked with them for years. If you want to get in on the ground floor and have a long-term career and possibly have room for advancement, especially as a welder, this is a great position for you. They are looking for, actually, they need two prep associates right now. Um, this is a first shift position, Monday through Friday. I believe it's 8 to 4.30 p.m. It is for a company here in Bloomington. And they are looking for somebody that can sandblast, that can help prep all the semis before the welders go in and do their thing. Um, they're looking for somebody with experience in grinding and sanding or even painting parts. They are all about promoting from within. So they are always looking for people that they can promote from this prep associate position into they have decal installers. They have they have welders. They're more than willing to train the right associate. Yes, it starts at $12 an hour. That doesn't mean that when you get room for advancement, they're, they're very willing to pay and to compensate for that. So again, if you have been looking for an opportunity to get in with a company, learn some new skills that will take you very far, make sure that you apply for this one. 
and they're just really nice too. <laughs> nice, they're great really, people really nice. They really, really, really nice people. Um, assembly associates. So yes, this is another one that's awesome. If you only want to work four days a week, but you know, get paid for 40 hours. So we have a company here in town. They're doing Monday through Thursday, 6 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. So you're always going to have a three-day weekend. Fantastic. The nice thing about this position too is it starts at 11.50 an hour, but after 30 days, it increases to 12.50. Um, so what they do there is they're making wire harnesses. So they're looking for people, obviously, with some dexterity, good with their hands. Um, they also perform on the line testing and inspections. And so they're looking for people too that are really good with reading work orders and production drawings. So again, a nice little four day work with shift. Great if you're an early riser, you're an early bird, you get there at 6 a.m., you're done by 4.30, you're gonna have a three day weekend. And again, they're looking for people ASAP. This is in normal. Building maintenance tech. We actually have a few different clients looking for building maintenance people. So if you have that skill set, this is for a client um, that is located here in Bloomington. This is a full-time temp to hire position. Again, first shift. So it's going to be Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. Starts at 13.50 an hour. Um, but they are looking for somebody that's got HVAC experience. They're looking for somebody who, if you love doing grounds maintenance, mowing, weeding, cleaning up the parking lot, they're looking for people that can help with just basic building maintenance, electrical, plumbing, that sort of thing. Um, if you have been wanting to do any sort of maintenance position, you know, please talk to us. We have a couple different available. So like I said, this is just one. We do have a, another one, at least one other one available as well. So if you're a maintenance guy, you've got that HVAC experience, come talk to us. Inventory clerk. This is another great first shift position, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. This is for a company here in Bloomington that makes circuit boards, and those circuit boards are used in all kinds of different equipment, a lot of agricultural equipment. Um, they've got some government contracts as well. If you're a very detail-oriented person and, and you enjoy organizing things, the inventory clerk position would be perfect for you. It is pulling all those little tiny circuit board parts, and they are tiny. So, when we say detail oriented, this is perfect for somebody like that. Um, but you're pulling those parts, getting the kits together and sending them out to the machine operators. So again, first shift Monday through Friday, eight to 4.30, starts at 12.50 an hour. Um, they are also, look, they actually have several different positions open right now because they're growing so quickly. Um, I also put coding department associates on there as well. That one is again, first shift, 8 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. $13 an hour, what the coding department does is actually help to coat the circuit boards and put the protective layer over them after they are finished. So again, this is one of those, Sam had said earlier, we have different manufacturers with different environments. This is one that's a very clean climate controlled environment. They keep it at 70 degrees because the circuit boards, they cannot have any static. You could eat off the floor in there. It's very quiet. So it's not your typical like manufacturing environment when you think of a manufacturer. Very, very clean, climate controlled. Um, like I said, they have several positions available right now. I just put on two hot ones right now that I know that they're looking for, but you can always jump on our website and, and check out the others that are available. Um, one thing too, did you talk about benefits? That we I just general said that. Yeah, so just to get into a little bit more about benefits, I know that a lot of staffing agencies don't offer um, for temp to hire positions health benefits. And, you know, that's something that everybody needs. I think one thing that makes us a little bit different is we have health benefits available to associates. So once you are placed in a position, you get your first paycheck, you then have 60 days that you can enroll in our health benefits. There's a lot of different packages that you can choose from. There are supplemental benefits that you can add on, such as um, vision, um, dental, long-term disability, short-term disability, all those things are available to you as well as any dependents. They just come right out of your check. Um, so I think that's important to mention because a lot of times Absolutely. other staffing agencies just don't have that available to them. That's, that's kind of it, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I saw Leanne had a question maybe in the chat room. So all of our jobs are on our website, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll stand ready to answer any questions at the end of this. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, Brooke, for your animated and engaging presentation. <laughs> that was that was a first for me. That Lego joke, you know it, Dave. Daniel. <laughs> he, 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 that Lego joke, he made me. 
Uh, I did want to mention that my colleague David Garvey has put the employer booth uh, page for Pride staff in the chat section. So if any uh, individuals on the call today want to go ahead and take a look at any of the information that they covered here today, you can do so at that link. Uh, any questions that we have for Brooke and Sam, again, will be directed to the end of all employer presentations. Uh, where we will hopefully have a robust Q&A uh, session uh, where you can answer or ask any of the questions that you'd like to have answered by uh, Pride staff. Thank you both. Thank you. And next up, we have Norm with uh, CareerLink. Norm, I believe you're going to briefly just kind of touch on uh, a few employers who were not able to present today. Yeah, uh, thanks, Daniel. Um, I'm going to very, very briefly um, touch on uh, two of the, the companies that were scheduled to present, but were uh, ended up being unavailable. Uh, one of the companies in alphabetical order is JTEC Industries. Uh, they are a small uh, manufacturing facility located in East Peoria, Illinois. Uh, some of their specialties include automated systems, trigger cart systems, uh, heavy duty trailers from 3,000 to 20,000 pounds and light duty trailers. Uh, 3,000 pounds or 2,999 pounds and below. Uh, they won an award for the 2019 Illinois New Exporter of the Year from Bradley University, 2018 Product of the Year in Material Handling Product News, and 2017, the same award as well. Uh, JTIC Industries uh, has three openings right now. Uh, they have one for a CDL truck driver. Um, They're looking for someone who has at least a high school diploma uh, class A CDL. Uh, they must be able to operate a 10 speed manual transmission and prefer one to two years of forklift experience as well. Um, that position, um, that I know they have multiple openings um, on that one. Um, the other uh, two positions they have available, uh, they have one for an assembler, uh, actually two different positions, assembler one and assembler two. Um, both of these positions um, require um, being able to stand on your feet uh, for the majority of the shift, uh, manual dexterity, uh, be able to grasp, uh, manipulate and assemble objects. Uh, they have to have attention to detail. Uh, they want someone who's dependable who will show up for work. Um, they also would like this individual to have good reading comprehension skills um, and good mechanically as well. Um, these positions, um, as I said before, they require that you be on your feet um, with bending, stooping, balancing. Um, you must be able to lift and move 50 pound parts and fixtures. Um, and those will be available until filled. Um, the assembler two position is very similar. Um, it does require a little more skill um, than, the, than the one position. Um, they also ask that the person be PPE trained um, per training is required for a specific skill to be performed. Um, they want your work area clean and clear of clutter and trip hazards because they are a manufacturer. Um, they are kind of a unique company in the fact that you, we, you they are um, completely built in the USA. Um, all of their um, manufacturing takes place um, in the States. Um, they're, uh, the, the purpose behind um, what they make is they try to replace uh, forklifts being in the aisles. Um, as, as many people know, forklifts can be uh, a little on the dangerous side. Uh, so GTEC tries to provide uh, automated systems that can kind of take the place of forklifts anywhere from uh, 2,000 feet to two miles. Uh, so if you're interested in a position with JTEC, uh, their link is listed up here. Um, our last company um, is Zentech. Uh, they are a manufacturing company located in the Bloomington Normal area. Uh, they have several positions available. Uh, Camtech's been, uh, or formerly Camtech, Zentech uh, bought out Camtech recently. Uh, Zentech uh, will continue to provide a great opportunity for a lot of people in the Bloomington Normal area. Um, they do work with Pride staff, so a lot of the positions you would see with Zentech are actually available through uh, Pride staff staffing. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free uh, to contact them directly, or you can also reach out to Sam or Brooke at Pride Staff, and I'm sure they can tell you a lot more information about Zentech that I can provide. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, we can open it up for the question and answer session now. Thank you so much for those brief mentions, Norm. As Norm just stated, we are going to go ahead and transition into the Q&A. 
Uh, as I have stated before, if you have any questions for any of the presenters who have presented here today, uh, you can go ahead and enter those into the chat section and we'll get those questions answered for you ASAP. Uh, I do have a question for Megan from CAT. This individual asks, uh, what union is represented at Mapleton? Thanks, and I think uh, Leanne might have wrote back to that too. It is UAW Local 974. Fantastic, thank you for that, Megan. Mm -hmm. And we also have another question. This one will actually be for Pride staff. Uh, this individual asks, could I see that Bloomington manufacturing job from Pride staff again at the end, and why can't I find any Bloomington jobs on their websites? Uh, are, for, first of all, are they Googling uh, Pride Staff Bloomington or just Pride Staff? Because there's there's other locations across the country for Pride Staff, and that could be taking them to the wrong website. So if you Google Pride Staff Bloomington. Actually, I was going to put it up here. And let me, uh, just for one moment, when I actually yeah, have my screen share. There you go. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So that's the actual to get to our pride, yeah, our blue meets and page. So so I think the manufacturing job that they text was about the uh, CNC. Oh, was that the one? Yeah, I think. So we can just we're gonna we'll turn these into slides and offer those up to yeah, this position is on our website and it, it does say CNC machine operator as the job. Fantastic. Thank you both. And uh, as Sam stated, they will get that information, uh, hopefully transitioned into some slides and we can pro uh, provide those for you. Excuse me. And again, if anyone has any questions, please enter those into the chat section and we'll get those answered for you. Uh, in the meantime, we'll go ahead and pivot to some just kind of general standardized questions that I like to ask employers on all my events. Uh, we will go ahead and just follow kind of a sequential order to make sure things kind of continue to flow. So we will actually begin with CAT, then obviously natural fiber welding with Gene, and then work our way to Pride staff. Uh, Megan, the first question I have for you is how long does your process, hiring process, excuse me, typically take from the point of the submission of an application to the point of being hired? Great question. So, um, it takes a couple weeks typically for the roles that I mentioned here. The only caveat I'll give to that is that we are starting to see background checks returned a little bit slower than usual um, with our vendors during COVID. Um, it's, it's hitting other facilities more so than it's hitting ours right now, but I wanna, I want people to be aware that it, it could hit ours at some point. Um, it could hit our vendor too. So a couple weeks, um, but we're moving pretty quick because we have openings right now uh, that we need to fill. And then we also want to get some some extra positions because of our attrition rate. So um, if if somebody's applying, you know, today, they can expect to hear from us pretty quickly. Fantastic. Thank you, Megan. And it looks like we may have lost Gene from Natural Fiber. Uh, so I, we can, with that, we can go ahead and transition then to Brooke and Sam from Pride Staff. I know your organization's a little bit different, but can you kind of answer any of the questions uh, that uh, we posed for you? So when you apply, we go through our new leads every day. So it comes right into our website. Um, and then I am typically the person that checks those. So we reach out right away. Um, typically the only time there's a delay, of course, is if it's over the weekend because we're open Monday through Friday. Um, but if you apply, you're going to hear back within 24, 48 hours. Um, and then from there, it is a little bit different because we always do a interview, which right now we're doing phone interviews with everybody to keep with the social distancing. Um, and then after we do a phone interview, that's when we can submit your resume over to our clients. And then they let us know if they want to set up an interview. So sometimes it's contingent upon how quickly there's that turnaround with our client. Um, but for example, I had a machine operator apply for a position last Monday. I phone interviewed him on Tuesday, got his resume immediately sent over to our client. They interviewed him on Wednesday, made him a job offer same day, and then he started this week. So it can be a very quick turnaround. Um, you know, if you have the skill set that matches up with the clients, or what the clients are looking for, we can get people placed within a week. 
Fantastic. Thank you both. The next question that I have for you is, do all employees need to have a GED or high school diploma in order to apply for any of the positions that were covered here today? Uh, we will begin with Megan and then we will transition to Pride staff. I guess that helps if I come off mute, huh? <laughs> no um, so yeah, so we, we do, we're looking at this time just for two years work experience. So the, the short answer is no, it's not required for these roles. And Pride staff. Um, no, it is not required to apply with us. We do have some clients that require a high school diploma or GED. We have others that don't. Um, so it just kind of depends. Obviously, we need to make sure that what we're sending you is compliant with what our clients' um, hiring guidelines are, but you do not have to have one to apply with us, and we have many clients that don't require that. Fantastic. Thank you both. And another question that I would just like to pose to you all that I get quite frequently on these events uh, is, how are you all handling COVID safety precautions? It's obviously a concern that a lot of job seekers have given kind of the state of the world as we currently have it. Uh, Megan, can you answer that question? Yeah, thank you for asking that. Um, so we do have a number of precautions we're taking. Um, first of all, we have temperature check outside before anyone enters the facility. Um, if someone's temperature is elevated, there's a holding area they can wait in and get one recheck. Um, if there's a, if they're High after a recheck, they're asked to go home for the day and HR will follow up and just kind of explain some next steps. Um, within the facility, we closed down for a week, uh, the first week of May, and we redesigned the facility for social distancing and for um, just, just to in, encourage some more sanitization. So basically you'll see that our break rooms um, all have dividers on the tables, um, our Doorways are one way. Uh, we reconfigured the design of, of several portions of our building so that we have one way doorways and, and stairwells, doorways and stairwells, excuse me, um, to avoid any congestion. We've staggered our start times um, so that we don't have congestion in the hallway and, and through the turnstiles. Um, we have new room occupancy guidelines listed on every room, including break rooms to make sure we've removed extra chairs so that only chairs available are six feet apart and there's markings on the floor. I mean, we've really done everything we can to make social distancing um, uh, vi very visual and, uh, and hard to, to break. Um, and it, obviously we um, require masks or face shields on appropriate PPE um, where people are near heat and can't wear those types of PPE. Um, we've gotten them um, pappers and others. So we, we're doing anything we can to make sure we're keeping people safe and, um, and encouraging social distancing. And our leaders have done a great job walking the floor and kind of keeping an eye for that. And I, I'm guilty myself. You know, sometimes somebody is a good friend. You're trying to catch up in the hallway. You start to get a little closer and then you realize. Um, so we've built a good culture of where it's okay to say, hey, hey, we got to take a step back, you know, and nobody's going to scowl at you. Uh, so those are the things that we're doing to keep people safe. And we've got a regular cleaning schedule. We have foggers that come in and cover all of our areas. We have a sanitization like bell that rings every couple hours and we all stop and disinfect our, our personal areas. So um, I, one area that I'm so proud of Kat and how they've handled this and particularly at Mapleton, I mentioned earlier, I started this job May 1st and that my first week on the job was that week that we closed and did all of this for COVID. Um, it really interesting time. I, I saw your faces there, um, Pride staff. Really interesting time to switch jobs uh, for me personally, but it also was great because I got to dive right in and I got to see firsthand all of the things they were doing on to keep our people safe. And that's, that's the number one priority. Thanks for that question. Thank you, Megan. Uh, Pride staff. Would you like to take a stab at that question? I'll tell you what, all the kudos to you, Megan, for that deal. I That's a hard start there, but uh, sounds like you uh, did it successfully. Rose to the occasion. Rose to the occasion. Yes. Brooke, why don't you talk about kind of our protocol here? And yeah, then... so we kind of have a two part. So we have in our office and then of course what our clients are doing, um, but we locked down. So I actually, when everything first started, I worked from home for three months and didn't come back into the office until June. Um, and our office door is locked. 
So the only time we allow anybody to come in is if they're doing a drug screen or we have to make copies of their I-9s and they're in our office for less than 10 minutes. We do require masks. We are, we were already germ phobic to begin with, but <laughs> we just stepped it up with um, COVID. So yeah, we've got our Lysol, we clean all the time. Um, all, I know you can't see our office, but we're all spread out. Um, and then we do phone interviews. So we don't do face-to-face -face interviews anymore. Everything is over the phone or online as much as possible. Um, and then Sam's gonna talk about what our clients are actually doing. Well, uh, just one, one more second on recruiting. There, as I recruit for some of the higher level positions in manufacturing, so like, like plant manager and um, production manager, QA, so on. So I, I am doing a lot of those, as I know everybody on this phone or are, are on the Zoom is, but via Zoom or go to meetings or, um, and, and it has been a little bit interesting and learning curve for all of us, but um, it is a really surprised me how effective it can be. And um, uh, anyway, I, I'll, I'll go right to all of our customers, each one of them have a little bit different protocols. But they've all, and, and I feel good about this, they've all stepped up to it, written their protocols down. And I think for the most part, everybody's sticking with those protocols. And uh, we have one employer, in fact, it's got some kind of space age thing where the, as the employees go into the entrance, they go through a single file thing and the thing automatically takes their temperature. Um, uh, so I, you know, with this, so many people in so many different locations for me it's good to know and feel like and then i think megan mentioned or one of you all mentioned about having separate shifts that don't come in contact with each other we have a big employer that does that as well which so if it would happen to get on one of the shifts at least the other two shifts will still continue to operate so we're you know we're finding workarounds they're finding workarounds but of course um, masks mask or your temperature social distancing i mean yeah Fantastic. Thank you both. And uh, so now I kind of want to pivot back to the chat section. This question is actually directed towards Megan. Megan, uh, we had an individual uh, kind of express his interest in uh, working for CAT. Uh, he's wanting to, you know, kind of follow up with you, you know, for more information on the position and how to, you know, submit an application and be hired uh, ASAP. Uh, where would be the best location for him to follow up uh, with you? Would it be your email address or is there just kind of a general HR email address or a phone number? Where would he, you know, be able to get in contact with somebody for any questions that he has? Yeah, so thank you for that, Andy. Um, for sure, please post to the job online that's linked through um, our employer booth here. I, I have to have you posted to it to do anything. Um, following that, yes, you are welcome to reach out to me and um, and my email address, I can put that in the chat or if somebody else wants to put that in the chat, you're welcome to reach out. That way we can get you connected with the hiring manager. Her name is Rachel. Um, and we'll see if we can go from there. Appreciate your interest, Andy. Fantastic, thank you, Megan. And if you could please uh, enter that information in the chat, that would be fantastic. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and pivot back then to some of the standardized questions. And since Megan is probably occupied doing that, uh, we will go ahead and allow Pride staff to be the first to answer the question. And I know you guys kind of briefly touched on some of the standard benefits that were offered, but I know, you know, a lot of folks that are uh, job seeking at the moment, uh, they're interested also in kind of what are some of the fringe benefits that maybe some of your uh, partners or agencies that you work with uh, offer for some of the positions available. One thing, I think Brooke talked about some of it a little bit in the presentation. I think uh, shifts are a big deal. Uh, it always been, has been in my career that if, you know, that you can work the seven to three, Monday through Friday, and or, but some people would prefer, you know, alternative shift like the four day work week. And uh, they don't mind working 10 hours in a day, but they, to give them three days off in a row. And I, I think there's things like that. I think there's some, the intangible, you know, we would go down a list of all of our customers and each difference that they have, and we'd be here all day. But uh, I do think there are some um, other opportunities to move up in some of, and that's not really necessarily a fringe benefit, but it is a benefit of working for 
these companies just be able to move up in the organization. And we've seen that happen with our employees too. So I don't we, know if you want to add. Or... Yeah, we also have multiple uh, manufacturers who are doing attendance bonuses, which I think is awesome. Um, so depending on um, how many hours you're there, we have one where it's based on a percentage of how many hours you work. Do you get an hourly on top of that? Um, we have the forklift position, like I talked about, that's technically you're only working 36 hours a week, but as long as you're there, you're going to get paid for 40. Um, we have another one that offers an attendance bonus after so many days. So we've seen a lot of that this year, um, I think more so than I've ever seen before. And I think one of the reasons is obviously, um, you know, just trying to, to get people to work and they know that they, they need to offer something with this climate and everything going on right now, um, as well as the, the flexible work schedules like Sam had talked about. Fantastic. Thank you, Pride Staff. And Megan, can you kind of attest to what uh, Fringe Benefits CAT might offer? Yeah, I'm happy to share. So um, for Caterpillar roles, you know, of course, we there are there are more once the conversion takes place. Um, there's we have a gain sharing plan with bonuses that are paid out a couple times a year uh, for the supplemental roles that are open today. Uh, while those roles remain supplemental and before someone would necessarily convert. It's, it's really more cultural. And some examples of that are, um, you know, we just ordered t-shirts for everybody for manufacturing a day that's, that says, you know, great American essential worker or something like that. Um, we, include, we include everyone in that because they're the people on the front line working hard every day. And they're, they're giving a lot of time during a really weird time in, a, in our world um, to, to helping us still continue to serve our essential customers. So we do things like that um, for Veterans Day, for holiday meals. Um, we did, uh, we got some really nice uh, tumblers actually this year that we gave to people as an incentive to get their flu shot. And we, you know, we include everybody for that. You don't have to be converted to cat for that. So there's a lot of things like that. In the summer, we bring in um, ice cream or popsicles and stuff when it's hot and we'll walk around the shop floor and pass them out. So there's things like that that we try to do just to keep people engaged. And it doesn't matter matter if you're Caterpillar agency or supplemental, you know, you're in our facility, you're part of the family and you're getting a job done. We want to recognize you. So I think it's more cultural than anything. And then of course, once that conversion happens to Caterpillar, there's a monetary component as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Megan. Another question that I would like to ask both of you is, would a minor drug offense in the past stop someone from being hired with your organization? Uh, Megan, you can go ahead and begin if you would like. Nope, just don't lie about it on the application. Thank you. Yep. Right, staff. Same answer. It does depend a little bit on our uh, employers, but basically the same answer. Fantastic, thank you both. Uh, I do have just a couple questions for you both before we kind of wrap things up today. Uh, the first question that I like to ask uh, employers on all my events is, can you kind of attest to what the opportunities for advancement are uh, within your organization or in the case of Pride staff with your, you know, the individuals that you partner with? And then could you kind of maybe attest to any sort of success stories that perhaps you have uh, and perhaps that could be even your own? Yeah, I'm happy to share a little bit. So from our perspective, especially with these roles that are posted today, the growth potential is pretty significant because we're looking to bring people in that we can, um, we can really form a relationship with. You can try us out. We can try you out and we can get you into some of our positions quite quickly. Now, um, the one caveat I will provide in full transparency is once you enter and you convert to Caterpillar, you are a um, union employee and your, so seniority does become a factor. So just keep that in mind. But there, we have a very high um, retirement eligibility rate at Mapleton. I mentioned we have a lot of folks who have been there for a long, long time. And, um, it, you know, we've got a lot of experience about to walk out the door, which is scary for me, but also it's an opportunity for a lot of our other employees because those are pretty senior level positions. Those are more skilled positions. And so there's going to be some movement and it's a, it's a really good time to join um, our Mapleton facility for that reason. Um, we are dedicated to employee development. So um, for those who raise their hand and want more, want to learn other things, they get those opportunities. And then when those jobs are open, they're qualified because they've, they've learned it. 
and they can post and bid to those. So I think that's a great experience. And as far as a success story, um, I'll use a member of my team. His, his name's Andrew and he started in the shop um, and he, he started in production and he became a section manager over time. Uh, then he took a non-traditional role, which is um, we call them non-trads. And it just means that you are a production employee, but we put you in a role um, to sort of let you get, gain some management experience, report to a management team member. Um, and it's usually temporary, but during that time, you have the opportunity over a couple of years to post for management positions. Um, Andrew was able to do that. Then he became a rep. Now he is our labor manager and he's the best labor manager at this company, in my opinion. Um, Andrew is so solid and, and um, will, you know, could do my job tomorrow if something happened to me. And he, he has such great perspective because he's been in all those jobs. So when he's sitting across the table, talking to some of our production folks or coaching them or giving them guidance, or if he's sitting in, you know, a union meeting, looking at their grievance, he can have a conversation where he totally understands the other side of the table. And um, he just has done a phenomenal job. So the sky's the limit if somebody really wants to come in and apply themselves. Fantastic. Thank you, Megan. And pride staff. I'll start in a philosophical vein at the be to just to say that I, in manufacturing, there are fantastic career channel jobs. Uh, I, I think somewhere back in mid eighties, you know, we law in, in America, we kind of lost this uh, passion for manufacturing to some extent. And I'm not sure we sell these jobs as well as we used to. Uh, I think we, there's a, sometimes a stigma about manufacturing jobs, but I'm telling you, we work with some of the cleanest, well-lit best facilities you could think of on the planet earth. Um, also in a big facility, which many of our customers are, as they're growing, they're offering, uh, you know, it offers opportunities for anybody that's in there on the shop floor to move up. Uh, and, and the skill sets in certain positions are career lifelong uh, opportunities, you know, whether they stay with that ma manufacturing company or go to a different one. You know, it's sort of like getting a degree, you know, once you get it, you know, nobody can take it away from you. And so that's what I, how I feel about manufacturing. If you can see, I'm passionate about it spent my entire life in it, started off as a tire builder on the shop floor, did that for 10 years. And, you know, I, I think I've had some success in my career and it's simply staying in manufacturing. And there's a lot of great opportunities, a lot in manufacturing. And I'll, I'll let Brooke kind of talk about some of our success stories, which I yeah. just tickle me to death. So just a couple off the top of my head, um, you know, anytime somebody is actually converted <laughs> to, to our client's payroll, I feel like that's a success story. But we recently just had an individual who started with actually the seasonal forklift position that I had mentioned earlier that I said it's a six month forklift position. He started with them. He worked, I think just last season with them. They kept him on because sometimes they will do like a skeleton crew off season. And he um, was just hired, directly hired by the client and he is now in a supervisor position. Um, so that happened really quickly. I mean, that was last season that he started with them. So within a year, from a seasonal forklift driver to now he is a full-time direct hire supervisor out there, which is awesome. His name is Nicholas. Um, and then we had another gentleman named Roger who came to us. Um, he had actually been a butcher. Like that was his skill set. He had cut up some meat. So we started him in a seasonal position for a cemetery. He mowed them. They loved him, said he was the hardest worker that they'd ever had. But of course it was just seasonal for the summer. So when fall rolled around, um, we placed him with one of our manufacturing clients, actually one that does the circuit boards. He started as a janitor for them. He was doing custodial position for them. Again, hard worker, impressed them. He's actually moved his way up and now he's in a specialty position, um, has been converted over to their payroll. So he's 100% their employee and he's in a specialty position um, for them now on the production floor. So I think that's really awesome. And I like what Megan said. Um, earlier about the sky's the limit. And that's really true. Like as long as you're a hard worker, you're dedicated, you're doing a good job. Our clients are all about pr promoting from within. And those are just two examples off the top of my head that I can think of. I know that we've had others as well, but it's really true. You know, you get out of a job, what you put into it. So th there's definitely room for, for growth and opportunities. 
Fantastic. Thank you both. And I do have one final question uh, for both of the employers here today. And that is, how can a candidate stand out and get an interview, assuming they are qualified for the position they are applying for? And, you know, kind of some examples that I like to use is, are there any sort of personality traits that you would maybe like to, you know, see highlighted or perhaps any sort of, you know, during the application, maybe certain keywords on a resume or anything that would help any of the job seekers on the call today stand out when they submit an application for the jobs that you guys have covered today. Megan, do you want to start? Yes. So there's a couple things that I'd recommend and none of it's rocket science, but you'd be surprised how many people don't, don't do this. Um, so first and foremost, you know, I like to, to tell people prove it. Um, I mentioned that we were looking for someone who's a self-starter who um, looks for problems and solves them, even if, you know, it may not be your fault, but make it your problem kind of thing. I want to contribute to the greater good. Um, but when you're talking about those skills in an interview, unfortunately, everybody can put proactive and accountable on their resume. And they can also say those words in an interview. What, what I like to say is, if, if someone looked right back at you and said, okay, but prove it, what would you then say? What example would you give them of a time that you demonstrated the fact that you saw, you saw something that wasn't your problem, but you fixed it for the betterment of the facility or for the organization or for your team, whatever it is. Um, instead of, of telling us that you're those things, prove you're those things through some examples. And they'll ask you questions in your interview that will give you opportunities to share that. So reflect, you know, when you're getting ready for your interview, spend some time reflecting on what makes you great and, and have an answer to it. And don't be shy. This is not the time to be humble. <laughs> we want you to, we want you to shine. Um, we want you to be successful. So think about the things that make you a great employee and that, that make you um, better than the next guy and tell us about them and give us those examples. It's, it's prove it, prove it, prove it. And um, if you look at every word on your resume and think, how would I prove it when it comes to soft skills and, and attitude and dependability, that's the biggest piece of advice I can give because the, the words you use to describe yourself will make a difference. And we can read your technical qualifications. We can test those. Um, in my case, we're not even looking for any, so it, it doesn't matter. It's more about the attitude that you're going to show up with. Will you show up? Will you be a team player? Um, will you, will you um, carry the work ethic that we want to see and really help us build things better for this world? Can, can you do that? You know, and, and that's what we want to see if you have the drive or not. And that's good stuff, Megan. I would yeah. second that. I, I, I say it a little bit different way. I say show, don't tell. Uh, I love it. Uh, I think um, I, another one for me, I mean, is and this is kind of the prove it thing is numbers. You know, I'm always interested in numbers. And sometimes in some positions, you know, uh, entry level, there's, they're not going to, we're not going to be talking about a lot of numbers, but if you come to me as a, you want a sales job or you've been a production manager or things like that, you should have some numbers to back up to prove it of what you were doing. So that's kind of a big thing with me. I like to see that on resume. I don't know what would you. Yeah. Ask? And I love how Megan talked about soft skills and, and, you know, you don't, I can teach you the skills that you need. We can give you aptitude tests to see where your where best your skill set fits, but there's some soft skills like having a good personality, being friendly, uh, showing up to work, showing up to work on time, <laughs> showing up to work with all the equipment you need to do the job, like just being a reliable, responsible, dependable person. You don't need a skill set to be able to do that. Um, getting along with others, being that friendly personality, you know, seeing if there's more work you can do or like how can you contribute to the team. Those are all things that you don't, you know, you don't have to have done before necessarily, but, you know, it's all part of your personality, just having that great personality. And I, I think back to the candidate I just mentioned, Roger, who had a butcher and he'd mowed and now he's in the specialty position. He didn't have that skill set going in. They taught him that because he was a good person and a good employee and they wanted him to be there and they wanted him to be part of, of his, their team um, because he contributed a lot to it. So, you know, just being that friendly personality, being open to learning, getting along with others, being on time. Those are all things that, uh, you know, you just, you just have to show up, show up and do the job. If you want to explore that further, Brooke and I have a series of videos <laughs> on our Facebook page and on my LinkedIn page talking about 
doing interviews, talk about resumes, talk about any of that stuff that you want to touch on. Uh, if you're if we haven't bored you already, uh, <laughs> you can check out those videos as well. Fantastic. Thank you both. And with the conclusion of that, we can go ahead and kind of begin our wrap up for today. I did want to go ahead and give Norm uh, from CareerLink an opportunity to just kind of make some summary statements um, and perhaps maybe cover anything that uh, we might have overlooked here today. Norm. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to thank uh, both Megan. Uh, I wanted to thank Sam and Brooke uh, for being uh, with us today to present, to answer questions, to give great information, great opportunities to all our job seekers. Um, I would encourage anyone looking for a position right now. Um, definitely, uh, the time of, the time to apply is now. Um, strike all the irons hot. Get your resume in. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to recommend. This is going to sound kind of strange. Tell tell five other people. Um, there's a lot of positions right now with all the companies. Um, encourage people to go to Illinois WorkNet to apply for these positions with CAT. Apply for these positions with Pride Staff. Apply with Natural Fiber Welding. Um, these are great opportunities. These are good paying, uh, family sustaining wages. Uh, that's what we look for. These aren't, these aren't just fast food wages. Um, these are careers. Uh, so take it seriously, apply early. Um, if anyone does need training assistance, um, you can always come to career link. Uh, that's my employer. We, we do not employ, uh, people per se, but what we do is we provide training grant money, federal grant money, if you qualify, if you're a dislocated worker or you're from a, a household income that would qualify for assistance, uh, feel free to go to www.careerlinkil.com. Um, click on tuition assistance, apply. If you want to become that CDL truck driver, uh, then you can go apply uh, for a CDL position, maybe with Caterpillar, maybe with Pride Staff, uh, maybe with JTEC uh, that's available. Uh, just because you don't have the skill set today doesn't mean you can't in the future. Um, again, I want to thank everyone who spent their time, the job seekers. Uh, thank you for being on today. Thank you for participating. Uh, thank you for asking questions. Uh, we are in unprecedented times. Uh, it's very difficult uh, right now sometimes to navigate through this, but there's a lot of companies out there that are still hiring despite what the media says. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities to, to make yourself a better uh, high growth, high demand position. Uh, to put your family first and to get yourself a better job. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Norm. And again, as Norm already stated, I would just like to thank everyone who participated in today's event, both the employers, presenters, and the participants. Uh, again, I just want to remind everyone that this session has been recorded. And after we conclude this event here today, I will upload that to the Illinois WorkNet YouTube channel. Uh, where it will be accessible there. Uh, I am also going to place that link onto each of the respective employer booths for the employers who presented here today. So you will also be able to access this video there if there's anything that you would like to review at a later date and time. Uh, thank you all for taking part in this. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon and a great day. Thank you all so much. Thanks, bye.